test, 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 test. I'm, <clears throat> I'm Stephen Bendenoon with Israeli News Live, and we are looking today at a very interesting case against uh, Brigade, uh, Brigade Commander Colonel Ofer Winter. Colonel Ofer Winter, of those of you that may recall, we had spoke about him here on Israeli News Live uh, a little while back when he invoked God as uh, the, the leader of Israel's military. And uh, the, many of the, he was brought up and, and, and reprimanded by um, Defense Minister Yolan for actually making such a statement. Yolan claims, of course, which is true, there are other different types of fighters in the Israeli military that are not Jewish, uh, including Christians and Muslims as well, that are Arabs that fight for Israel's freedom uh, as well. We actually took up for Commander Colonel Om uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Commander Ofer uh, Winter, in this uh, particular case because we realized that Israel, its military, its first general, Joshua Benun, was actually under the command by God himself leading the children of Israel into battle. And Israel has returned home to their, to their promised land according to a biblical mandate, a biblical mandate that the prime minister of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, actually quoted from the book of Amos that Israel had returned home never to be uprooted to, uh, again. In our time, the biblical prophecies are being realized. As the prophet Amos said, they shall rebuild ruined cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink their wine. They shall till gardens and eat their fruit. And I will plant them upon their soil, never to be uprooted again. Veshavti etshvut ami Israel, uvanu arim neshamot vayashavu, ונטו קרמים ושתו את יינם, ועשו גינות ואכלו את פריים, ונטתים על אדמתם, ולא ינטשו עוד. Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Israel have come home never to be uprooted again. So therefore, if Israel's own prime minister has quoted a biblical passage before the United Nations of the reestablishment of Israel as a sovereign nation according to a biblical mandate, then its military must also come under a biblical mandate. I also would have to say the prime minister Netanyahu should have come to the commander uh, Ofer Winter's aid when anyone tried to even bring up an accusation against him. Now they're trying to railroad him out of the military. They have brought up against him false charges, which were just recently dropped. We were unaware of the charges at the time. Military prosecutors decided to close the investigation case against Givadi, uh, Givadi Brigade Commander Colonel Ofer Winter. According to reports in Haaretz on Monday, Winter was investigated under a warning last Thursday by military police on suspicion that he knew about several incidents in his brigade and didn't inform his supervisors about them. But that ended up being baseless. He, uh, he did report these. The information was passed on. Uh, it's, it's being said by sources close to Winter added that it would be impossible to cover up the investigation because the IDF's criminal, criminal investigation unit, CID, was holding a covert uh, investigation in the brigade on the claims against uh, Hayabi, an investigation Winter was aware of as a brigade commander. Several of Winter's soldiers told Arush Shiva last week that he is being targeted for elimination for his religiosity, accusing organizations and people, including those in the army of joint campaign, seeking a pretext against Winter. And it all started after he made religious statements at the start of the operation of Protective Edge. Anyway, we want to say, God bless you, the God of Israel bless you, Commander uh, oh, for Winter, there should be more commanders like yourself on the ground in Israel. And this is the only way that the God of Israel will stand and back his people is when we get commanders such as uh, uh, Commander Colonel Ofer Winter 
in, in that type of place. Also, I was looking a little bit at politics, the different uh, people that are running. We know that, of course, Prime Minister is running against uh, uh, Yolan, excuse me, not Yolan, but he's running against Danny Dannon uh, in this election here as far as for the Likud Party's uh, leader there. We also know that uh, Ms. Uh, Livni, Zippy Livni, who was part of the uh, uh, she's part of uh, Zippy Livni, who was part of the uh, two state solution and has really blasted Prime Minister Netanyahu on his, uh, as she calls it, a shaky stand on Israel. Uh, and, and a lot of things like this are going on in Israel. And I got to thinking about it and looking back at some of the video footage of the different comments that each one of them have made. And, it, it, you know, I, I can't say for politics because I don't know. I know that God will send the Mashiach eventually and it'll settle all these problems. But, you know, when you really look at it, Danny Dannon has really been one of the most powerful statesmen, even back during Protective Edge, where he was actually speaking against John Kerry, saying that he should mind his own business. He says, we need to take care of Hamas, and the only way to deal with Hamas is to fight them until you finally finish the job. Now, I don't know if he's for a two-state solution, but I do know that Danny Dannon stands for Jews should be allowed to live anywhere they so desire. Uh, so at least out of the candidates there, if any, if, if Netanyahu does not make it, I'd like to see what just what happens with Danny Dannon to see if he falls under the same political pressure, which I'm sure he would if he did make it. But I am very fearful that Mississippi Livni will get it because we know that there is a prophecy that Israel will be divided. And of course, she would gladly divide it. I'm Stephen Bendenun with Israeli News Live. God bless you. Happy Hanukkah and uh, the holidays for the Christian people around the world. Baruch Hashem.